Hello, and thanks for checking out ChartGuys.com. We're proud to be one of the most successful technical analysis communities online, teaching you the skills to become a more confident, effective, and informed trader. Join our community of hundreds of analysts worldwide working together to learn the charts, generate profit, and achieve financial independence. For access to daily live chart analysis and market coverage, a thriving chat community, along with dozens of hours of exclusive educational materials. We look forward to seeing you. Let's check out some charts. Hey everyone, checking in on the cryptocurrency space. So if you are trading in any sector in this market, you have to be aware of what's going on with Trump and the trade war having major impacts on the entire market as a whole. Check out the video that I just put out for the S&P 500 and all that good stuff. Also, there's gonna be opportunity in commodities this fall in my opinion. So that's another good video to check out, which I'm gonna make probably tomorrow morning. So looking at the major names here in the Canadian MJ space, they were definitely impacted negatively by what the S&P 500 did on Friday, with which was all out dump in response to Trump retaliating to China, retaliating to the US, retaliating, trade war, tariffs, all those buzzwords. So looking at CGC, we got the gap down open for the oversold bounce play, and it actually ended up being a decent bounce to start the morning, and bulls were very impressed, or I should say bulls were very pleased with how much bounce that got going. We ended up bouncing over 4%, about four and a half, five percent from the low to the high. I personally played things more cautious. So if I were being aggressive, I would have doubled up right on that gap down open. But the uneasiness in the market made me switch to conservative mode. So I was going to reserve my second entry for low 24s if we gap down open and then dumped. We didn't. The bull showed up quickly. Had I not made an order Wednesday, had I not made an initial entry Wednesday just under 26, I would have absolutely made an initial entry on the gap down open. But because of that first entry, I took the conservative approach and I sold a good chunk of my position at break even on this bounce as opposed to averaging down first. So that ended up not making any money. And I'm perfectly fine with that because again, it's all about your style. My style right now is conservative. Goal number one is don't give back profits from 2017 and 2018. Goal number two is add a little bit more profit. So satisfied goal number one by being conservative, but congrats to those that bought the gap down open and were able to at least worst case scenario, set your stop at break even and not lose any money when we rolled over and dropped to a new lower low because the S&P 500 saw an all out collapse. And then from there, it was pretty much just the five minute time frame slow bleed again and a little bit of an end of the day run, increasing bull volume. We essentially just reached a point of seller exhaustion where there's nobody left to sell. And even though the S&P 500, which was correlated this entire pullback, even though the S&P 500 didn't really see much of an end of the day bounce, the bulls stepped in, some shorts covered, and that left a little bit of a bounce into the end of the day. So I do still have a small position from under 26, but at this point, if I add anything else to it, the position that I add will be hundreds of percent larger than what my small position is right now. So when I say small, I mean really, really small comparative to what a normal position size is for me. So I am still interested in this daily oversold bounce, absolutely. Even though we didn't get any follow through, doesn't mean I'm giving up on the play because the daily RSI is still getting down towards some of the most oversold it's been. Daily RSI is under 26. Look at the four hour exponential 12. And as soon as I looked at this time frame on Friday morning, that was another reason I was exiting break even because the last four days in a row prior, now five days in a row, we have rejected from this on every bounce attempt. One, two, three, four, five rejections. So as soon as I saw that, I said, okay, well, that's going to be in the low 26s. We've rejected four times in a row. If we get up to the low 26s, it's already going to be a 5% bounce underway. I would expect to at least initially pull back from that level and at least consolidate on the five minute or 15 minute time frame. So we ended up rejecting and down to a lower low. The four hour RSI is right at 30 still. Can definitely see another leg down on the four hour. The end of the day bounce cooled off the hourly RSI. The bulls are going to have to break 2511 and look up at 2610 to get any kind of progress on Monday. And I'm also watching the exponential resistance here on the hourly because it hasn't crossed bullish since the earnings dump. So I will absolutely still be interested in CGC. I will not be looking for any follow through on the daily time frame unless we get over the four hour exponential 12 period resistance. If we do, we zoom out to the daily, just looking for a lower high, lower high every day, so far eight days in a row, but we'll look for a bounce for a lower high compared to 34.34, 34, 
when we get over that four hour exponential resistance, but the S&P 500 may get ugly to start next week. We'll have to see how the reaction goes. So I probably at this point will only look to add a break of 24 and then I'll reestablish a solid position under 24. And again, my game plan is looking for that daily lower high. And I believe there will be a solid eight to 10% bounce once the temporary bottom is hit. And once we get over that four hour exponential resistance, Cron is dumping as well. So Cron confirmed the bear flag on the daily down at the low 1136. Next support level is 11 psychological. And the next clear weekly support is 956. So just psychological levels until we get down to that point. Weekly RSI is not oversold. Daily RSI is not oversold. That's why I'm interested in CGC and not interested in Cron. Definitely saw some impact of CGC correlation on the rest of the sector with its bounce on Friday, although not tick for tick with all the major names. They were all doing their own thing to a certain degree. ACB still very weak, confirming the daily bear flag that we saw after the three-day bounce attempt. And now we're looking down $5.50, $5 psychological levels. Bear still in complete control of ACB. APHA continues to stand out strong. It held on and did not break that low of Thursday. That's very notable where everybody else in the sector was weak. We also had a $500 million uh, short-term prospectus. Prospe well, that's the first time I ever said that word. Prospectus. So they filed that. That is dilution. And it started making its rounds on Twitter. We haven't had a press release yet. We'll see if the press release leads to a sell-off. But I am surprised there was not more bearish reaction. I actually entered some puts on APHA when that started circulating and very quickly covered it break-even because of a lack of any follow-through. So here's our initial reaction to Twitter starting to share that dilution news. Quick bounce, dumped again, quick bounce, dumped again, quick bounce. And as soon as I saw that, I said, all right, that's not what I expected to happen. Break-even, no harm, no foul either way. And we did dump at the end of the day. So we'll see if that carries over a little bit into Monday. But daily time frame, I'd like to see a pullback because as I said, I'm looking for a daily higher low compared to 583. And I think if we can form a daily higher low, right when the CGC gets a daily meaningful bounce going, that will help the bulls form a daily higher low compared to 583 as opposed to just fading back down towards 583. So still keeping an eye on APHA, but we have to see a break of 641 to start pulling back for that daily higher low. TLRY, daily bear flag confirming 28, 27 psychological supports. Anything under 3240 is now just a lower high on the daily time frame, keeping those bears in full control. So I'm not going to cover HEXO and OGI in my regular daily videos, but covering it here on the weekend as I've got more time. Anything under 460, just a lower high on HEXO. Solid bounce from the open. We opened down at 395 and we got all the way up to 418. So that is a solid 5% bounce from the low, but again, just a lower high rejecting with a double top at 418 the last two days and then fading back down. Bulls have to change the hourly trend by holding 392 and breaking 418 to get some meaningful bounce going. And then we'll just be looking for a daily lower high. Again, have to change daily trends for bulls to prove anything to us. OGI, remember that head and shoulders long ago? That saved big time follow through. That bear break was at 602 and here we are at 465. Anyways, daily clear confirmation of the bear flag. Big bear volume. Now we're oversold on the daily. So OGI, four hour oversold, just getting there. Daily RSI, just getting oversold. So let's see if it continues to get beat up and joins the ranks of CGC as far as most beat up four hour and daily RSI out of major names. So OGI will be on watch, but anything on OGI under 528, just a lower high on the daily time frame. CTST still all bears. We did see a solid bounce, but honestly, I would be staying far away from this name. If you're not already short, probably too late to see significant downside in my opinion. If you're looking long, probably playing with fire. Low, high, higher low, lower high. So it's worth watching. You know, there's little day trade scalps in there. 178, actually our higher low is now 183. Anything under 198 is a lower high. If this were to tighten up, through Monday with a rejection from 198, and then we see a break Tuesday, that might be worth trading just for a flip. But when I say flip, I mean holding for less than an hour. T God tightening up, lower high has been set now at 332. Bulls have to hold 295 and break 332 to change this daily trend. So essentially watching this tightening range between the low, high of the big bull move, higher low, lower high, 
have to hold 295, scouting a higher low. Potentially a bottom fish there. Again, same scenario where if CGC gets its oversold bounce going and we can hold 295, that'll help the bulls, in my opinion, get some correlation to hold that support level. VFF, that bear break of $12, such significant follow through at this point. Just now two major increasing bear volume days in a row and closing at the low of the day. So the daily downtrend confirmed at $12, and here we are almost down 10% from that level in two days. So the weekly time frame, looking for its higher low to form. Daily RSI, not close to oversold. Four-hour RSI is oversold. So worth watching if we see a quick flush on Monday. Probably going to see at least a short-term oversold bounce. And again, can be watching for the weekly higher low to try and form here. I would be shocked if we dropped down and broke 889 without forming a weekly higher low. If the bears were to take back over, in my opinion, it would look something like that. So there is going to be a weekly higher low in the most likely scenario, in my opinion. VFF, APHA, CGC, and a little bit of OGI. But if I'm watching all those other three names, I don't care about OGI. But that's the order as far as, or that those are the names that I would be paying attention to the most in this weakness. VGW did hold 312 support. Just barely, but we haven't gotten any bounce follow through. Bulls have to get over 345 to be looking for a daily lower high compared to 405, but that's a double bottom that the Bulls want to hold and try and get a bounce off of. Have to break 345 on Monday to follow through, and if we don't, that's a red flag. Labs on the daily chart after a significant pullback, trying to see a bounce. We broke all support levels, just looking for anything under 630 to be a daily lower high. Hourly bounce on Friday, getting a little bit of movement on the end of the day. 516 is a double top, inverse head and shoulders on the hourly. If we pull back first thing Monday, bulls have to hold 484 and then break 516 to see the inverse head and shoulders on the hourly play out. And then we would zoom out and just look for the daily lower high to form. NEPT, brutal pullback. Not a pump and dump, but a pump and slow bleed giving everything back. That's a red flag to me, regardless of anything, nothing to do with fundamentals. Just if the price is going to see that kind of bull move and give it all back and then some and lose the weekly higher low pattern without a higher low from that move, big red flag to me. So I have no interest in any PT personally. Anything on the daily time frame under 512 is just a lower high and support after 409 is 404. And then there's a gap down here at 402. And RTH Lower high on the daily is now 84. We drop to a lower low. Only support is 78 and 76. Break those levels and it's a very notable bear break with a lack of any support nearby. Clear weekly downtrend remaining intact and close to another leg down. KHRN, dumping, big bear volume. Low caps are not the place to be. It's the same as a cryptocurrency space and altcoins. When Bitcoin is weak, altcoins dump and no one has any interest in them. And right now, that's the case for low cap, small MJ names. If the big players and large market cap names are getting crushed, who's going to be interested in the very higher higher risk and higher reward, low cap, almost penny stocks, pretty much penny stocks at this point. So a new low here. The next support level is down at 114. Daily time frame, anything under 185 will just be a lower high and just getting absolutely crushed like a lot of these names. But... These names will see significant gains when the entire sector shifts and the entire sector shifts from fear to euphoria, but that could be a long ways away and it's a brutal slow bleed. And I say slow bleed, but from our 229 top, just early August, we're down 33%. So certainly fast in terms of percentage pullback. So overall, am I still interested in oversold bounces? Yes, I told you on who. CGC has the majority of my attention. I do anticipate there's going to be a great opportunity to get a bounce. And again, it's the same style where, that I mentioned in the last video where you're either locking in short-term gains, just knowing that those lower highs are going to form, or you are setting a stop at break even and hoping we get follow through and hoping to hold it long-term. So this is a potential opportunity. Weekly RSI on CGC is not common. And we'll see. If the Bulls can get a bounce going early this week, we'll check back in after Monday. I appreciate you watching. USMJ video probably coming out tomorrow. Do good things out there. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. We'll cap it off with some more Iceland. And I'll see you next time.